Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of OK Zoomer. I'm Aaron Lichtig, Zometry Guy and former Jeopardy champion. And I'm excited to be here today with SJ Jones. Now, SJ is an additive manufacturing applications engineer. She's now at Siemens Energy in Orlando, Florida. And she works primarily on metal additive manufacturing. And she's also a strong advocate for diversity within the manufacturing industry. Welcome, SJ. It's great to have you here. Hi, good morning. So first of all, tell us about your career journey and how you got to where you are today. Um, okay, I'll give you the, the, the quick and dirty version. I graduated from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Daytona Beach with my bachelor's in mechanical in 2016. And then I decided I wanted to do biomedical because I'd done some bioprinting over at Embry-Riddle. So I moved to UCF and started my master's in biomedical. And then I worked for a hospital in Orlando doing biomedical research for about two years. And then I realized that as much as I really loved the impact of my research and helping the local communities, I really missed 3D printing and I really wanted to get back to it. Uh, so I began networking and then I started working at a sort of 3D printing startup out back in Daytona Beach uh, called 3DMT. I started there at the beginning of 2019 and then a little bit into the journey, uh, they were purchased by their largest aerospace company, uh, not company, company, <laughs> Aerojet Rocketdyne. Um, and then I started doing rocket parts. So I switched from doing medical implants to rocket parts all within a span of like a few months. And I recently left there to start working in the energy industry doing metal additive over at Siemens Energy. Excellent. So what are some of the most, your, your, your most uh, kind of personal satisfactions and dissatisfactions with your career so far in AM? Um, I would say that uh, working at Siemens Energy is probably the most satisfying part of my career so far. I'm really excited to be a part of a team that's working on creating a decarbonized world. And for those that don't know what the big word decarbonized is, it just means that we're working to reduce the amount of global gas emissions in the atmosphere, fighting climate change and global warming and all of that stuff. So I'm really excited to be a part of a team that's, you know, working to save the world. Interesting. I, car, uh, with regard to carbon emissions, Zometry does do carbon offsets today, and we will soon offer our customers the ability to offset their own carbon with each order. So that that's uh, it's something new for for manufacturing on the whole, and we're we're pretty excited about that as well. Um, so I, you you had asked me before the uh, the session to ask you what is the question that nobody is asking. Um, so the question that nobody's asking is, what's it like to be black in AM? Like, what's it like to be black in additive? So um, is it, what is it like to be black in additive? Um, <laughs> it's kind of like being a unicorn. Uh, you feel special because everyone regards you with like, oh my gosh, wow. We'd love to hear your diverse and different perspective, but you also feel really isolated because there aren't a lot of people that look like you walking around. Gotcha. So what are some of those challenges that are faced by people who are, are Black and working in additive manufacturing or part of other traditionally underrepresented groups? Uh, we're facing a lot of challenges. Um, I meet at a lot of intersections. I'm a woman. I'm Black. I'm gay. Uh, gay people are bullied and publicly humiliated in these predominantly like underrepresented areas. Women face sexual harassment all the time. Um, black employees are constantly facing like the stereotypes that we have to overcome. And Just to give you some examples. Yeah, that, that is something unfortunately that, that is fairly common within the manufacturing industry. Um, and what, what do you think the industry would gain from being a more diverse and inclusive one? Um, I would say that uh, recently, a lot of people have been asking me for my perspective because it's a different perspective. But I've noticed in a lot of networking events that sameness breeds sameness. So if you have a lot of the same people in the room, they're going to come up with a lot of the same ideas over and over and over again. Um, 
And I think that if we had more diverse rooms, we would have more ideas. And I think if we had more ideas, it would lead to better innovations. What is the, the climate like for diversity and inclusion uh, at your current position at Siemens? Uh, uh, at Siemens Energy, I'm going, I'm not going to lie to you, it feels like Disney. Uh, <laughs> their policies for diversity and inclusion are like outstanding, above and beyond, top notch. I was blown away on day one. Uh, for example, like their supervisory board is already at 30% uh, female capacity, which is like, you know, the goal that most companies are still trying to get to. Uh, recently, they doubled the amount of female leadership that they have. Uh, they have a lot of internal active programs to help network people by age, uh, gender, your ethnicity, uh, so that you have people who are like you and they can connect with you and you feel more included. Um, and they also have like a very extensive like pride support network. So all letters of the alphabet are welcome at Stevens Energy. That's great. And uh, why why is this important? not just to you personally, but to all the people in Siemens and on your team? I think that diversity and inclusion is really important because if you have to hide a part of who you are or hide a part of your identity, um, it makes you feel unsure about yourself. So it's really hard to make decisions and it can also make you feel unsafe or unseen, um, a bit invisible. And that brings down your engagement, it brings down employee retention, and it brings down your motivation to go to work. And I didn't want to deal with any more of that. Um, so it's really important for me to see more diversity in our industry, especially in the additive industry, because I mean, we are advanced technology. I believe that when people say advanced technology or advanced manufacturing, a lot of the time they're talking about additive. And how can we be so advanced and how can we lead the charge if we're not setting the example? So I would love to see more diversity in uh, our industry. What are some things that manufacturing leaders of all backgrounds who really care about diversity and inclusion within their organizations should, should think about, or more importantly, should do? Um, I would say that it starts with the leadership. So Siemens leadership has led this charge, and I think that's what's made them so successful but you know on your day-to-day -day, i mean communicate and educate uh if you see something say something if you hear something wrong or if you hear something racially unjust said by a coworker, just speak up and be like hey man like that's not okay uh if you're in a meeting uh listen to who's talking make people feel included so if people aren't talking try and get them talking shake things up move the seating arrangements around uh, do a brainstorming activity that requires everyone to speak and allow everyone to be heard. And what advice would you have for people who are kind of on the other side? So leaders who either don't believe diversity and inclusion is a priority or, or maybe actively opposed to it, or at least opposed to it in certain circumstances. Um, what, what advice would you have for somebody in that situation or somebody who is dealing with people who are in that in that mindset? Um, that's a good question. Okay, um, I'm gonna leave that with a quick anecdote. Uh, so as I told you, I'm highly educated, went to Embry-Riddle, which is like the Harvard of the skies. I have two master's degrees, well, almost two, um, but I had an instance very recently where I took a huge part, um, thousands, like a $70,000 part to a heat treat supplier. And I pulled up to the heat treat supplier in my car. The part is like really heavy. I mean, like my car is like sitting low and I start backing my car up to, you know, the garage in order to drop off the part. And I get out the car and I'm wearing like my regular like work pullover. And <laughs> I'll never forget seeing these guys come out of the heat treat place and like walking up to me all big and tough, asking me like, what are you doing here? And I was like, oh, uh, I'm here to drop off a part. And they're like, are you sure? Like, who do you work for? Can we see like some ID? And I was like, they, I didn't know I had to bring ID. 
And then they saw that I had like the logo on my shirt and they're like, oh, did they send you, did so-and-so send you? And I was like, yeah, they did. And they're like, oh, cool. I didn't know that they got an Uber driver. And I was like, I felt like slapped in the face. And I was like, wow, like even, <laughs> even in this industry, little things like this still happen. And I want the people on the other side to understand that we're not making it up. Uh, I want them to understand that we're not doing it for attention. We're doing it because we want to feel seen, we want to feel heard, and we want your help. We're looking for allies. We're not looking to cause a scene. Um, we just want to be, you know, in the room. Uh, I heard recently someone said that diversity is getting an invite to the party and inclusivity is being asked to dance. And so we're still trying to get into the party and I'm still waiting to be asked to dance. Well, not anymore. I'm like partying my butt off over here at Siemens Energy. It's awesome. But <laughs> I think you're catching the drift. Yeah, well, thanks for sharing that story. That is a, a, a good way for, for people who are not in that situation every day by, by virtue of their, their race or gender to understand that, that that is something that is still going on in our industry and it's, uh, it's something that we, everybody needs to be aware of. Um, I want to ask you too, you mentioned up front that you, you really wanted to work in additive manufacturing and that's kind of how you got back to where you are now in your career. What, what is it that you love about additive in particular? Um, you've, you've got this, this great background where you, you've studied a lot of different parts of engineering and a lot of different types of it, but you keep coming back to additive. Like, what is it um, that brings you back here? I think Robert Heinlein said it best. I think it was him who said that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Um, so the first time I ever saw CAD being done, um, you can just think of, like, that Harry Potter scene where he picks up the wand and all of a sudden like his hair stands on end and like the light starts coming off of him. And that was what additive was for me. Like once I started seeing CAD and it was literally like you went from a blank screen to boom, an engine. Um, my mind was just like blown and I was in, I've been in love with it ever since. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you already know that like I'm super in love with entopology because I love like the new systems they're coming out and how they're changing the cat around and how they're really pushing the limits of the game. Uh, and like that right now, that kind of technology is like what's really getting me out of bed in the morning and like racing to work. They have some really cool software and they, they had some big fundraising news recently as well. Mm -hmm. All right, well, SJ, thank you so much for joining OKZoomer okay today. It's been great talking with you. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you so much for listening. And I'd like to say thank you uh, for being brave and having this conversation with me because I feel that starting this dialogue, you know, as small as it is, is one step in the right direction. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We will be back in another couple days with another episode of OK Zoomer. Take care.